Hi there, grade nines. Um, on Friday, we looked at some multiple choice problems related to ratios and percentages, and I wanted to share some of the different solutions that people came up with. Um, there are two goals. One is to try to identif learn to identify different kinds of problems, um, and the other is to look at different ways of solving the problem so that you can choose uh, what way that, that makes sense to you and that is efficient from your standpoint. The first problem was this one comparing ratios. So you can see that the this is a type of problem where we compare ratios. And one of the best ways to compare ratios is to find a unit rate. Um, so that's what we have here. So the unit rate in this case kind of gives, gives you an idea of what to use for the unit rate cost per milliliter. So in our example, we're dividing the cost, which is 229, by the number of milliliters which is 500 and it gives us 0 0.0045 dollars per milliliter. That's the unit rate, or that's one unit rate you can look at. We're looking for one with a lower cost per milliliter, so we want a number that's smaller point than 0 0.0045. And so if we look at uh, item B, which was the correct answer, if we divide the dollars by the milliliters, we get 0 0.044 dollars per milliliter. So when you're finding a unit rate, please be careful to look at the units of the two numbers that you're dividing to find the rate, and that will tell you um, the units of your rate, and then you'll know what to do with it, whether to multiply or divide, or, or whether it needs to be lower or higher to compare it to another unit rate. Here's the second problem, and this is a different kind of problem where we've got a uh, ratio and we're looking at parts of a whole. So in this example, we are given this three liters of fruit punch, and the three liters is the, is the total or the whole for this problem. And then the, the three liters is made up of two parts that add up to three liters that are in the ratio of one to three. Um, so this was Emily's uh, idea was to use parts. Um, so if there's three parts, um, pineapple juice and one part orange juice, then there's in total four parts. So if we divide our three liter into those four parts, we get 0.75 liters per part. And then the pineapple juice will be three parts at 0.75 liters per part, which is 2.25 liters. And the orange juice is 0.75 liters. This is simply a check here. If we add up the amount of pineapple and orange juice, do we get to three liters, which was our total amount of fruit punch, and we do. Now this kind of a problem can be extended into more than two part two ratios. So what if we also had, in addition to the orange juice and pineapple juice, let's say we had um, seven up or something in there, and the ratio was one to three to two. So one part orange juice, three parts pineapple juice, and two parts um, seven up. Wouldn't really be much more difficult. It's just in this, then we would have six parts in total. One part orange juice, three parts pineapple juice, and two parts seven up would make six parts. So we would just divide into six parts and um, then just go from there. So this is a, a pretty easy solution to, a pretty easy kind of problem to extend uh, when you've got more than two ingredients in your mixture, for example. Here, this was a third one with uh, discount, percent discount and tax. I think this, I think it was Hannah who suggested uh, this solution. Um, so 25% discount, so if we multiply by 0.25, that will give us our discount. We've got to remember that this is the discount, this is not the sale price, so we have to take off the discount from the original price to get the sale price of 63.59. Another way of doing it, which some people suggested, was if it's 25% off, then that means 75% is remaining. So if we multiplied the original by 0.75 here, we'd get the sale price right away. And then in this case, the tax was calculated and added on right away with a single calculation. So the one here in this 1.15, the one is the original amount and the 0.15 is the tax. This is an older problem where there was 15% sales tax. I know that today we would use 13% for the sales tax. But in any case, um, so you can do this calculation here to get to 73.13, which was the answer. Or you could calculate the 15% and then add it on to the 63.59 and we'd get the same answer. This was an interesting problem because there were lots of different ways of solving it and I've recorded some of the ways in which this problem was solved. So the first method um, was to figure out what 1% is. So if $35 represents 8%, then we can divide 35 by 8 and we get this number here, which is the dollars for 1%. It's $4.37.5 for each 1%. 
it is a unit rate that's a specific kind of unit rate that works for percentages where the amount represents one percent once we know the one percent we can multiply by a hundred to get the hundred percent which gives us our answer here this is a fairly different solution but sort of same idea involved um, we've got we know we have a ratio here written as a fraction 8 out of 100 and we know that the 8 part is 35 so we want to figure out the 100 part so we find equivalent ratios we know that to get from 8 to 35 we have to multiply by 4.375 and if we want to know how to get this number we just divide these two and it will tell us this 4.375 and then we do the same thing to the bottom and we would get 437.50 that way. A third method um, put forward by Nick was to just do an estimate. If $35 is 8%, if we multiply that by 10, we get $350. So $350 would, must represent 80%. So 8% times 10 is 80%. So we know the answer has to be more than $350. And since this is a multiple choice question, there's only one that has more than $350. So the answer must be D. A fourth way of doing it, since this is a multiple choice question, is just check all of the answers. So if we find 8% of all of these, there's only one that gives us $35, which is D. So here's the calculation for that. And the last method down here at the bottom, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, so if we, uh, this, this was how Burke uh, solved the problem. Um, if we know that we know a certain we want to find a certain percentage of the total then we know that we would multiply the percentage as a decimal so we take the, the percentage and divide by 100 and then multiply that by by our total that gives us the percentage in this particular problem we're trying to find the total so we all, we know the part we know that $35 is 8% and we want to find the total so instead of multiplying by the percentage as a decimal we can divide by the percentage as a decimal so 35 divided by 0.08 is our answer, therefore 37.50. So to summarize then, what we're doing is if we know, if we want to try and find a part of the 100%, we multiply by the percentage of the decimal. And if we need to know the total um, or add up to the total, then we would divide by the percentage of the decimal. So that's this strategy of building back up to the whole. The last problem problem we did with this one, and I, I kind of presented it as what kind of problem is this? So we've got a basketball player that scores 28 points, and the 28 points represents 35% of the total, and we're trying to find the total. So this is like the last question where we're building up to the, the whole. So we don't know the 100%, we only know the 35%. Again, we could do a, a unit, uh, we can use this method, uh, which is a method I think put forward by Kira. Um, we see how many 35s are in 100. So we know 35% represents 28 points. So how many of those 35% are in 100%? Comes to 2.857. And then if we multiply that by 28, we get the total number of points, which is 80. Um, another way to do it would be to just divide the points by the percentage. So that this is kind of a unit rate idea, um, although the units aren't given here, that we should really write them in. So it's 28 points divided by 35%. So this would be 0.8 points per, per percent. So similarly to the first method in the last problem, if you figure out how much 1% is, then we can multiply by 100 to get the 100%, which is 80 points. And the third um, third method would be um, like Burke's solution from the previous one. Since we're trying to find the whole, instead of multiplying by 0.35, we divide by 0.35 and we get 80 points. We could, of course, again, check all four, since this is a multiple choice question, simply take each of these, multiply by 0.35 and see which one gives us 28 points. And the answer is, whichever way you look at it, D. So. Um, it's uh, really important for you to understand two things. One is that there are lots of different ways to solve these problems. And, and the second thing is to distinct, be able to distinguish between the two major kinds of problems. One where you are um, given the whole amount and you have to find some part of it. Um, and the other part where you have to build up to the whole. So with both ratio problems and percent problems, um, sometimes you're given the total and you have to find a proportion or percentage of it. Um, and sometimes you don't know the total and you have to build back up to that total. So if you review this um, video a couple of times, 
then you'll see uh, how that works and you can review your strategies for solving problems involving ratios, rates and percentages.